everybody first and foremost thank you for coming to my channel thank you for checking out this video taking time out of your day whether you like it you can share it whether you cry don't i just appreciate you taking time out of your day to come and watch this video and if you watch any other videos thank you for watching those videos as well i truly do appreciate it what i want to talk about in this video because i think it's becoming more and more important uh, we have an election coming up voting and politics has become more and more important it's a very hot I, I feel like we're almost in a stage where we're in that like that back in i think that was what 2004 i want to say 2004 2005 that kind of that vote or die for a lot of people i don't know if it's that important but it almost feels like we're getting to that point let me start off by saying that i'm a person who has been left-leaning for most of my life i don't really consider myself a liberal especially this new age liberal i don't have anything against anybody but a lot of people see as woke and as liberalism is more being progressive that's the way that i see it that's just my person i also think that unfortunately a lot of the left-leaning liberal candidates politicians have left people high and dry a lot of people have very high political buyer's remorse. They are very remorseful for what they signed up for, what they voted for, and what we've come to at this point. I think another reason why voting and politics is becoming more and more important is because we see a lot of the ways that these politicians act and behave and what they do, what they push forward, what they vote for, goes against what their constituents want. And that's on every side. That's on liberal side, conservative side, libertarian, centrist, whatever. A lot of these politicians saying they're going to go one way and then they move a completely different direction. And we've seen this with a lot of people demanding a ceasefire and people voting against that. People saying they, they won't vote for a, ce a ceasefire. Politicians not even willing to speak up on a ceasefire. Talking about speaking up, we see politicians who haven't spoke up on what's going on in Africa, what's going on in the Congo, what's going on in Sudan, and what's been going on in Ethiopia and that conflict. They're not speaking up on a lot of conflicts, but they'll highlight certain conflicts or they'll vote for sides that are committing atrocities. We've seen everything that these politicians have done for one side, have basically fronted and pushed forward a genocide. And they're pushing genocides forward all across the world, unfortunately. And even here, when we look at the states, we see which these politicians are, how they're handling border crisis, how they're handling crime crisis, how they're handling opioid crisis, how they're handling economical crisis. So we see that there's issues going on. What brings me to talk about all this? What, what makes me say this? We've seen these conversations of kind of like, we got to make sure we vote. We got to make sure that we put people in place that are going to do the things that are necessary, are going to move things forward for people that are gonna actually be for the people. But the unfortunate part again is right now, really, it's a two-party system. We have Republicans, Democrats. We have liberals and we have conservatives. These are the two parties that dominate this system. They dominate the government. My big question, my umbrella question for this entire, is it possible for us to elevate ourselves out of this two-party system? Because at this point, I personally feel like this two-party system has got us, it's got us going down a path that might be of no return. We might be going down the path of no return. As messed up as I think American politics are now, I feel like they've always been like this. I feel like American politics have always been somewhat of like a, a sketch show. The reason why sketch shows became so popular and a lot of sketch shows were able to elevate themselves is because of American politics. People have always talked about American politics. Comedians have always criticized American politics. Sketch artists have always criticized American politics. I think we've had good times in American politics, but we've also had times where things were in the dumps. Has there ever been a point where American politics wasn't a comedy show? If there has, please let me know. That brings us to where we are in 2023 and beyond. We've seen how Joe Biden has handled a lot of stuff going on, and it's kind of funny. I talked about political buyers remorse, and I think a lot of people have seen that. I mean, I was one of those people, I kind of felt like Biden was just a bridge. 
I think I still think he's a one term president. If he gets in for a second term, I will be amazed. Like I I will be shocked and in awe. So I still see him as a one term president. I don't think Kamala is a good choice at this point because Kamala just doesn't seem like she's there. She doesn't seem like she's doing anything. I saw Biden as kind of like a bridge to something else. But at this point, we're on the bridge. We're almost at the end of the bridge. And there's nothing else at the end of the bridge. We're basically walking off of a cliff. We're walking off a cliff into a lava pit. Into a lava pit that's in a black hole. That's basically what we're walking off into. Because the question is, what's next? As someone who is left-wing and we consider, I would consider myself a, a, a kind of like an edge Democrat at this point. I don't think I'm a Democrat for real, for real especially not anymore. I don't think I would go over to being a Republican or anything like that or being conservative. So at this point, I think I'm outside of any political party, but I still feel like I need to vote. We have that, that's this bridge president, this one-term president, and what's next? And honestly, a lot of people aren't going to like this, but I think if he doesn't go to jail, I think Trump is, is president in 2024. I think you can, you can bring up all the stats, you can bring up all the numbers, you can bring up this and that, you can bring up all the people that are against them. I think that Trump's presidency, his road to winning presidency in 2024 is basically, it's paved in gold. And it's, what's crazy is I thought that DeSantis was going to be able to elevate himself and get to that point where DeSantis was like the number one favorite. I thought DeSantis was going to do everything in his power to get there. And DeSantis folded. He folded under Trump's own power. I think at a certain point, a lot of people are going to realize that I think Trump is going to end up eating a lot of the Republican conservative candidates, a lot of the centrist candidates. He's going to end up eating them and gaining their power. So if he if he's able to stay out of trouble, whether you like him or not, I believe he's going to skate on these charges, whatever charges he has. I believe he's going to skate on those. I believe he's going to get out. He has skated before. I think he's going to skate again. His road to presidency to me at this point is paved in gold. Biden and Trump are clearly the two main candidates at this point. Trump has slowly elevated himself over Biden. We've seen Biden not be as able-bodied, not be as able-minded. Talking about political buyer's remorse, it seems like everything that conservative people and centers people, libertarian people are saying about Biden is the same thing that liberal people that voted for him are upset against. Also on that, to a degree, that's what that's the point of these candidates. These candidates, their 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 purpose is to put their best foot forward when it comes to being elected. Everything after that is up to them. But they're always going to put their best foot forward. If you go to a a car dealership, you think they're going to put the lemons on the front of the dealership? Do you think they're going to put the worst looking product up front? When you go to a dealership, the things that you see are you see the nice cars. If they have a Porsche on the lot, they're going to put the Porsches right up there in the front so that you can see them. Everything else is going to be behind that. They're going to put the Porsches, the nice, the Bentleys, expensive, the sport cars up in the front on display. And that's basically what we get when it comes to politics. They're going to wax and shine and make sure everything good is up front and everything bad is behind them. So we don't see everything that's bad until we get the product. And that's why we have political buyers remorse. A lot of the people that voted for Dark Brandon, Joe Byron, they're not happy with what they're getting. Are there any other candidates out there that can elevate themselves, again, outside of these two political parties? The other issue is, as much as these two political parties are different, they're one and the same. So they all have similar goals. And the goals, really, at the end of the day, the goals are economics. Economics is the goal. They want to make sure that the money is flowing where the money needs to flow. And while the money flows differently for Democrats, than it does for Republicans, the money still needs to flow. So it needs to flow who it needs to flow to. No matter what political science, what political mathematics, what political wizardry you put on this, I just don't see anybody rising or any other candidates rising outside of these two candidates. I think at this point, Trump is the, the number one candidate. He is the guy. And I think the other thing that comes into play in this is we're at this point where a lot of people are planning not to vote at all. They're just saying, they're upfront saying, I'm not going to vote. What's the point? We're still going to get the same thing. I think two things are going to happen. Number one, a lot of people that aren't going to vote, they just won't end up voting. 
Number two, I think a lot of people that are saying they're not going to vote are going to end up changing sides. A lot of people that are now saying they're not going to vote ended up voting for Biden. These people are going to be converted into people that vote for Trump. The other thing is that's going to happen is we're going to see a lot of influence. I think we're going to see more influence in this election, upcoming election, than we might have ever seen. I don't know if it's going to be on the same level as vote or die. We've already seen a point where you have certain people, certain celebrities that are pushing Trump forward. You know, you had Sexy Ray where people were upset about her, but she was just speaking her political opinion. You had people like Charleston White, who was very forward with his intention to vote for Trump. We saw his recent interview with Cam Newton has almost 4 million views. That's like a three-hour podcast. And I'm pretty sure Trump wasn't all there talking about, but that is a good enough endorsement. He's on the thumbnail. Trump was on the thumbnail for that video. So that's an endorsement. Whether Cam Newton says he's going to vote for Trump or not, that is an endorsement for Trump 2024. We're going to see a lot of people that are going to be influenced by people that are considered influencers, people that are saying, why are you voting? You don't need to vote. Or we're going to vote for candidates that do specific things. And then people are going to find those candidates. Maybe I'm missing something. Maybe I need to be more involved in doing more research. But I haven't seen one political presidential candidate come up and say that we need a ceasefire. Even Bernie Sanders, and Bernie Sanders, of course, isn't running again. He's at that point where I think it's, it's, he's got to take the L. Bernie Sanders seemingly isn't even for a ceasefire. And Bernie Sanders has always been like one of the people's presidential candidates. He never wins, but he's still the people's champ. I think we've lost that people's champ for a lot of people. A lot of people don't have that people's champ anymore. Another question under that umbrella is, are there candidates out there that are elevating themselves and have the possibility to kind of be like, all right, I can be a true contender against the two-party system. If there is not a candidate, how do we find a candidate? You see people that say, it's up to us. We need to make our voices heard. So how do we vote? Where do we find these candidates? What do we do? How do we get the word out about these candidates? It can't just be social media because not everybody's on social media. We're also in that stage where there's a large generation, just like there was a large generation in 2024, that is only going to be going based off what they see on social media and from influencers, from their favorite rappers, their favorite comedians, their favorite TikTokers. They're going to be going based off that. Are we going to have enough people that are going to be trying to elevate a, a third party presidential candidate and lift them up. Democrats, Republicans, they're not really doing it for anybody. They're not helping anybody except for themselves. It's looking bad out here. It's looking real bad out here. We got a lot of issues that are happening. And I just, it's, it's hard for me to see a true way forward without this end up being a, I feel like we've been in basically a five year Chappelle show, Boondocks, Mad TV, It's Always Sunny, Kirby Enthusiasm. I feel like we've been in a five year skit, sketch show. Think of your favorite internet, IG, whatever comedian. They, they went on live, they started a live sketch show or whatever, and it hasn't stopped. It hasn't stopped since like 2019. And now we're at this point. So, what do we do? For all the political scientists, the political activists, the people that are heavy in the politics, what do we do? What are our steps? How do we find a candidate who, one, can elevate a third party, and then not also that, but can deliver on the things that are necessary, the things that people want? Is it even possible? I had to say, I had to keep knocking on this, but I believe that Trump at this point is the number one contender for president. If Biden even gets close to Trump at this point, I'll be shocked. I will be absolutely shocked if Biden even comes close to winning. If any election was the election to throw the red challenge flag, to go to the replay booth to say, all right, it's election fraud. There's no way. There's no way there couldn't be election fraud. It's this upcoming election. Because I just, I, I can't see it. Like, I cannot see it. If I was a betting man, I would definitely put money on Trump winning presidency. Even if that's something that I don't want, I put money on it at this point. Because I just can't, I can't see it. I cannot see him not winning. And people may not like that. He may not agree with that, but I just can't see it. What happens? So much has happened in this year. So much craziness. I thought Ron DeSantis was going to be the number one contender. And he, he folded. He folded like origami. So I don't know. I, I don't know a lot of what's going to happen, but I do believe Trump is going to be president in 2024. 
whether people like it or not, that's what I see happening. What are your thoughts? Chime in. How do we elevate a third party to be a true contender? And not only be a true contender, but be someone who is going to give their constituents what they want and what they need. Give the people what they want and what they need. How do we do that? How? Let's, we got we got to figure something out. Something has got to be figured out or else we're, we are in trouble. Like I said, we're at that bridge and we're about to walk off that bridge. And the question of what we walk into, we're going to answer it in 2024. So we'll see. If you took time to watch this video, thank you. Feel free to comment, share your thoughts. Let me know what you think, what your answer is. Who do you think is going to be president in 2024? And feel free to subscribe. Feel free to share this. I just appreciate your time. And feel free to check out more videos on my channel. And have a good one.